The headline of this video is the Bobby Green stoppage, and we are going to do an extensive investigation into this stoppage right now. I have cut together a bunch of frames. This is like a weasel video more than a Jesse on Fire video for this particular... I've never done this before, what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to show you guys shot by shot, not just every step of the way through this stoppage to demonstrate how egregious it actually is. It's way worse than you think. And I said after the fight, or like immediately after the fight, that's the worst stoppage I've ever seen. And I was in the building. I was at UFC Austin. I couldn't hear the commentators. I wasn't getting fed any kind of anything from anybody. And, you know, Patrick Avila was there with me, my buddy Alex. I literally stood up. I was screaming at the top of my lungs while he was still punching Bobby Green. Stop the fight. Like the, I saw exactly what this was as it was happening. The replay's terrible. Now, after surgically going through it, and I'll show you guys exactly what I what I set up for you guys here. It's like, I'm going to go through this thing frame by frame, and that's what we're going to do. Now, also, we're going to go through the card itself. Incredible night of fights. So, not all negative, but uh, it might even end up being two videos, but we're going to start with the Bobby Green thing, and I'm going to go through that. Then we're going to talk about Sarukian, talk about all these other incredible fights, Misha Tate, every, just... Figueredo, incredible night of fights. We're going to talk about all of them. So that's what we're going to do. Now, before I get into it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't yet, we're about to hit 134,000. And that is what it is. I also wanted to plug these guys, Happy Hippo. Go to happyhippo.com. Shop their, shop their Kratom. I used one of their shots last night because I was going to be in the building for so long. And so I brought a, an on-the-go shot. I actually, they have these ones that have like a... They're like a vitamin B shot, kind of. They're like a like a five hour energy with kratom in them. Oh, they are the bomb. I've been I've been drinking one before I do jujitsu, and I drank one last night. They're the bomb. Check them out. Happy Hippo. Use promo code Jesse on Fire. Uh, and like I said, subscribe to the channel. We'll hit 134,000 today. It's going to be glorious. All right, so we're going to do the analysis first, and then I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking at the end. And I'm talking why did this happen? All right. So let's start this thing, and we're going to walk through it. Okay. So here you got them set up. He slips this one. This is the first one that lands. Bap, he gets caught right there. He stumbles back. Then he's on chicken legs. Right here, he realizes, it's like, oh, his legs are gone. He measures him right there. That's not a shot that landed. This one hits right behind the ear, and he crumbles. Okay, I'm going to pause it right there, because from here, anyone who has a trained eye, who has watched many combat sports events, knows that, there's a look to a guy who's done when he gets knocked out on the feet. And Bobby collapsed after this shot behind there. Collapsed. Like his entire body gave out. There wasn't one part of his body that tried to stop his fall. Like this is one, one thing that we're going to keep coming back to in this, in this analysis is this, okay? Your body instinctually will defend itself in certain situ in, in, mo in all situations almost, Okay. If you're, if you're across the room from me and I take a baseball and I throw it at your face and you see even a, a sliver of it in your, your body on autopilot will go, Shh, or you will automatically defend yourself, okay? When a person falls to the canvas without putting out their hand, without so much as even putting up an instinctual fight to break their fall or anything else, their body has shut down, full shutdown. That's the kind of fall that was, and any trained eye knew it just by looking at it. He went down with no ability to defend himself because his body had been shut down by that punch. Let's continue. So he goes down. He's not, he has no control, doesn't defend himself, nothing. Goes down limp right there. He's done. He's done right there. He did not try to break his own fall. He's done. Okay? Right here is where the ref should have been like if he doesn't if he doesn't immediately show some kind of serious defensive response this is over this right here is where this should have gone and here's instead what happens he gets hit with one shot okay he gets hit with another shot okay so he is still on his side he is not turned he is not moved he is exactly where he landed after his body shut down from the punch he's not moved at all okay so now he's been hit twice. He goes up again. He gets hit a third time. He has not moved. Okay. He crumbled down in a way 
like we discussed, and he has not moved at all. He's been hit with three shots. He has not turned to his side. He has not turned to his stomach. Nothing. Okay, one of these shots like wakes him up. He turns over on his stomach just barely because like I said, your body is going to, if you are able, defend itself, okay, on instinct. So one of these punches kind of wakes him back up a little bit and his body, like this is not him defending himself. He fell on his side. He's already been hit four times now. And the movement, I mean, he's completely done. He is starting now to turn towards his stomach because his his body is just doing things on instinct, okay? Now he has turned over. Now, does this look right here? Okay, now this is the fifth shot. Does this look like he has made any kind of serious movement to defend himself or that he's going to come back? He's on his side or halfway onto his stomach. Jalen Rose is in full mount. He's now rained down five consecutive punches on him. And the most movement that Bobby's made is on the fifth one. He turned a little bit like this and went like this. Okay, so let's continue because it's already a late stoppage now. Okay, so now he's moved over to his stomach. He gets punched again. Okay, he moved to his stomach on instinct. He gets punched again. He is now on his stomach having been punched. He is just sitting there. Okay, he gets punched again. He moves all, he, he literally, this is, this is as much... Do you understand how athletic Bobby Green is? Like, do you under do you, like do you understand what kind of athlete you're looking at? You understand how fast this guy moves? You understand how explosive this guy is? What his body is capable of? He's laying on his stomach. The most he can get his body to do is to go like this. Okay. Like, actually, think about this. I know, like, we watch a lot of combat sports. You get desensitized to this shit. But think about that. Think about what Bobby Green could do right now if I was like, hey, Bobby, go run a 40-yard dash. Bobby, here, show us some of your... And this is coming off of getting beat last night when he's fresh. Think about what his body's capable of, okay? He's been hit five times. He's on his stomach, and this is all he can get his body to do, okay? And Jalen Rose is continuing to rain down punches on him, okay? Let's, let's continue, Okay, now he got hit so so on that one he got hit so hard his butt his his head went all the way to the other side. He's now like on instinct just trying to move and do some kind of he has now gone like this from getting punched. Okay. So his head went all the way over here from getting punched, and then he went back like this. This is what his body is capable of now. Okay. This is at this is intelligently defending yourself. Okay. Boom, gets hit again. He's done nothing. He has not moved. He has not moved at all. Since he was knocked down, gets hit again. And now, oh, so wow, now, oh, it seems like he's really coming too. It looks like he's really gonna start fighting back. So now instead of here, because he just got punched in the back of the head, you stupid fuck. So now instead of just here, he goes like this because he instinctually knows he can get killed by getting punched in the back of the head so now he's he's now able to go like this okay olympic athlete he was able to muster this much now so it's uh, he must be he must be about to come back in the fight gets punched again on the other side still has done nothing is just sitting there has done nothing gets punched again has done nothing except now gets punched again has done nothing, has not moved, gets punched again, has not moved, has made no defense of himself whatsoever, has not, gets punched again, no attempt to improve his position, no attempt to do anything except lift his arms and try to, and then boom, this one knocks him completely unconscious. Okay, now he's out. Now he's completely out. He cannot defend himself at all anymore. He gets hit again. Okay, he's completely out. Now he's in hit twice. And this guy makes sure that just for good measure, he gets hit one more time before he actually steps in there, okay? It's fucking insane, dude. I can't, like, I, I actually said my goal with this video was, like, don't go fucking completely crazy because you won't sound as, uh, you won't sound like your opinion is as is as valid if you're mad. But that is one of the most insane things I've ever seen in my life, dude. He got hit 19 fucking times after getting crump, like getting accordion knocked down, dude. Like his body's not capable of moving. 
okay? Like, he did not move his legs. He did not move his his hips. He did not move anything. This is what he's capable of. And you're letting Jalen Turner, an absolute nuclear murder machine, rain down shots on him until you make sure he is actually unconscious. Then you let him get hit two or three more times, and then you step in. And that here's the thing. On that last shot, I wish I could show the full clip, but on that last shot, Jesus, I'm literally doing exactly what I set out not to do, but I don't care. I can't help myself, dude. Like, I don't think the I don't think the channel grew because I was scaling it back when I was mad, dude. Okay, so on this last one, I don't know how else to read this. Okay, he's obviously out, but on the very last punch, the way it looks to me is that he was allowed, he, the, the timing of him coming in ensured that Bobby was going to get hit with one more full throttle shot before he broke it off. That's how I read that. I don't know if, it can, if, if, it, if you can see it here, but he's out, right? And, and look, he steps in. He lets, he lets Jalen cock his hand back, right? He's cocked here. And he waits until he's on his way down. And then he steps in to make sure Bobby's going to get hit with one more shot. So what's my take? People, okay. I I mean, listen, I don't want to contradict myself. I literally just did. I just did a video that is currently in members only about the top, uh, you know, list of most powerful executives, most whatever. And I specifically, when I was talking about uh, Ali Abdelaziz, I was saying like, dude, if you don't know a person, then the way that you figure out what they're like is you default to the people around them. What, are, what you know, if a person never really has like a really solid crew, they've got a bunch of people shuffling in and out of their, of their circle, you're like, all right, so this is not a person who, and I was saying like, about, uh, like people say all kinds of shit about him online, but it's easy to look at, does he have a consistent circle of people who are who are who love this guy and have never none of them have ever said anything negative about him, like none of them. No, look at his crew. You guys know who he manages. No one says anything negative about this guy ever who actually knows him. So I'm like, that's probably a good way to gauge what a person is actually like. The ref. The reason I bring that up is because the ref. I am hearing that this guy's a good ref. That's what people are like, man, you know, this guy, he's a good ref. It's, you know, it's weird that he had such a, such a bad night, you know, like such a bad performance. All right. You know, I'm not saying he's a bad ref. I'm saying that looked intentional to me. Bottom line. I think like that looks intentional. That looks like he did that on purpose. It looks like he wanted to see Bobby Green get hurt. And... I say that knowing exactly what I'm saying. That's how egregious that stoppage was. And I also say it as a person who's, you know, like I might I might lean towards suspicion over giving people the benefit of the doubt. But I also understand people. Bobby Green, I love that guy. He's one of my favorite fighters. I'm sure that I've already said this earlier in the video. I don't know how I'm going to cut this together. I, I'm now having trouble doing that now where I repeat things that I said in early, uh, earlier cuts, but whatever. I love Bobby Green. I, I'm very aligned with this dude. If you, I could tell if he was a guy in my gym, he and I would be boys. He's my kind of dude, okay? But he is not for everyone. You know what I mean? He's not for everyone. There are going to be people who genuinely dislike him. You know, I don't even want to get into the personality type that's going to dislike him. I could, I'm not going to, but just rest assured there are people who are not going to like him. Just like there are people who are going to fucking hate me. Even if they, and I'm, I'm talking like, even if they hung out with me, where there's, it's very rare anybody who actually knows me and is like, fuck that guy. I mean, obviously if people watch me online and only see me talking shit into the camera, there are going to be people who don't like me. But, you think about that kind of negative emotion towards a person that a person could have. And I'm talking, Bobby would elicit more than I would, I would assume. And the only reason I even bring myself into the conversation is just because I have observed this kind of thing many times throughout my life. 
my entire life is, is, is watching people and interpreting how they feel about things and really interpreting how does this person feel about me. And just a universal fact is that the more out there with a person's personality that they are, the bigger the reaction that people are going to have to them. And so Bobby Green is an extremely wide open book. You see exactly what he is. He's wearing jewelry because he likes it. Like there are people where they put on clothes, they put on jewelry, they do this. Like they're doing it for reasons that are not similar to, like Bobby, dude, he likes that. He, that is who he is, okay? A big diamond necklace, sunglasses, whatever. That's who he is. Like he's literally, that is his, that's him as a person. And so obviously some people don't like that. And I absolutely can see a world where a person who really like kind of in this way that a person wouldn't talk about, like a deep way where they just really, really don't like a guy, which is how there will be some people who react to Bobby Green like that. And they're put in a position where they have to decide how many shots to the head a guy takes before they jump in. And if they really don't like a guy, maybe they let him take a few extra and they kind of didn't realize how many extra they let them take and that they were now becoming party to the worst stoppage in the history of the fucking organization. Again, people say he's a good ref. I haven't heard anything about him as a person. I do, maybe I'm completely off base and maybe it was just absolute sheer incompetence last night. Maybe he's a great, I mean, I have no, this is what I'm saying. Like what I, the reason I brought up the Ollie example is like, I have no reason I like to push back on him being a good ref. Maybe he's an exceptional ref, but I don't know how you explain that. I, I just, I don't know how else you, I don't know how to explain that. How could a good ref get it, be, be that off the, there's nothing there. There is not one movement that he makes where you could say, oh yeah, he's defending himself. The entire stadium was screaming, okay? Stop the fight. The whole play, everyone in the building knew the fight was over eight seconds before the fight ended. I screamed worst stoppage I've ever seen. That's the worst stoppage in history. From my seat with no commentators, ask Patrick Avila. And then immediately afterwards, my phone started lighting up on Twitter. I first one I saw was Ariel's. Ariel tweeted this the worst stoppage in history. And I'm like, and I was like, see? You know, like, and then Ariel followed it up, you know, with the with the tweet that he did, kind of outlining the the actual time. I think he actually got the time wrong because it said anyway, it doesn't matter. But like, yeah, I, I don't know. What do you do about a thing like that? Cause the guy's a good ref. Okay. Well, are you sure? Like, how do you, like, how do you measure that exactly? You know what I mean? I'm not saying to fire this guy. I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm, I have no opinion on what to do. Cause I'm, I don't have any idea if this, if this was actually a nefarious thing, like a thing that he actually did on purpose. I have no idea. I have no idea. So I am not saying fire the guy. I'm not saying, you know, throw charges on the guy. I'm not saying any of that. I am saying that from my seat, I don't see how you could, I don't, there, there is no case here for what you could have thought you were looking at. That's my point. There's nothing like, I'll tell you one thing, dude. So Dana said at the, at the press conference, right? Like when he was and he was defending, you know, uh, the dude, again, a reason why I am, <laughs> this is my best at this is my best at holding this back, believe it or not. But uh I mean, listen, dude, I'm not a perfect person, dude. I I yell shit and then I get new information and then I completely change my mind. This is going to be a tough one to change my mind on. Not not in terms of why he did it. I mean, there's no change in my mind whatsoever about the stoppage, but I just mean if like I met this guy and I was like, "Oh fuck, he's like a really good dude. There's no fucking way he did this on purpose." I would come on here and own it for sure. If I met him and was just like, dude, okay. I was emotional. I really like, I was emotional after that stoppage. I said some shit. I don't think there's any chance the guy did it intentionally there. I, I would always leave the door open to that. But like, what I was saying here is Dana was like, 
you know, we've had some really bad stoppages and, uh, and they said stupid shit like, I let her be a warrior. And he's talking about Mazagati in the fight with uh, Shevchenko against, uh, I can't remember the girl's name. But I'm going to be totally straight with you guys. I saw what Mazagati saw in that fight. And I realize it's not a popular opinion. And obviously I'm sitting here doing this and I don't have anything against that girl. But that girl really was defending herself the whole time. I mean, I would challenge anyone to go back and watch that fight. I can't remember exactly what, I mean, it'll be easy for someone to find it. But like, if you go and watch that and just go, is this girl putting up a legit defense? And I'm not talking like she's in full mount and cannot move and whatever. Like she was escaping. She was doing, the reason it went on so long is because she was doing a great job defending herself. It was gnarly because it's Shevchenko and whatever, but like she really was defending. I'm not saying Mazzucati's a great ref. I'm just saying when he's like, I let her be a warrior. I was like, dude, he did like basically try to let her fight her way out of that. It, it was not crystal clear. This, you know, okay, so he didn't say anything stupid after the fight. All right. Well, this is the most egregious late stoppage in history when he was standing right there. And it wasn't like there's some kind of mystery. Oh, is the guy unconscious or not? You know, like sometimes you have those ones where a guy's in a choke and you don't know whether they're awake or not. And then like afterwards, people are like, Jesus, the guy could have gotten killed. Okay, I, like, I totally understand. I'm not saying you don't be cr- critical of refs when that happens. But this was punches on an unconscious opponent. He got punched 19 fucking times. 19 times. I've probably said enough about this. This is obviously only going to be one video. And uh, whoop, what's that? Oh, all right. So what we're going to do, I'm going to just do this really quick. I'm going to just, uh, we're going to go through this one more time, just all at once. And then I'm going to sign this thing off. All right. So one time, I'm not even going to touch it. We're just going to watch it. Slips. He gets caught with this one. Boom. Gets hit behind the ear. Loses equilibrium. You don't know yet, but boom, chicken legs. Okay. He tries to slip. But bang, gets smashed right on the temple. He's unconscious. Falls, falls with absolutely no, doesn't break his own fall, nothing. He's out. He gets hit again. Okay. He has not moved. He gets hit again. Has not moved. Okay. He gets hit again. That's three times. Has not defended himself at all. He's out. He's face down. He gets hit again. That's four. He gets hit again. That's five. Now he's now he's raised his arm. Gets hit again. That's six. Gets hit again. That's seven. He has done nothing except just instinctually put his hands like this. That's eight. That one's to the back of the head. So he puts his hand up to the back of his head. That's nine. He's done nothing. That's 10. Sorry, that's the one that went to the back of the head. So now he's blocking the back of his head. That's 10. Now that's 11. He has not defended himself at all. Does nothing. 12. 13. The ref is literally right there, dude. 14. He's right there. He's literally watching this happen. He's fully mounted. 15. Okay. 16. Now now Bobby's unconscious. 17. Okay. He's already uh, unconscious now. 18. Okay, gets hit with two shots, unconscious, and then now another one, and he waits to make sure he gets punched one more time, 19, okay? Uh, Whatever I said I was doing in terms of like, uh, oh, let me leave the door open for whatever, indefensible. And, I mean, it's probably best if I don't say anything else. Uh, That's what I got. Subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. Love you guys. I'm gonna do another full video about the... uh, the event itself, and it's going to be fire. Bye-bye.